Have you ever seen something strange in the sky? Lately, people in Jerusalem have been reporting unusual sightings, and some believe these could be signs of the second coming of Jesus Christ. Are these sightings just weather phenomena or something more? Could they be connected to the end times? To know more, stay tuned till the end. The skies over Jerusalem have been on fire with bizarre sightings lately. From clouds that look suspiciously angelic to mysterious glowing figures, people are having a field day trying to decipher these cosmic messages. This video dives deep into the recent reports of unusual cloud formations and strange lights that have left Jerusalem residents bewildered. Are these signs from a higher power, or is there a more earthly explanation lurking behind the clouds? We'll explore the different sightings that have everyone talking, including cloud formations that bear an uncanny resemblance to angels, mysterious glowing figures that light up the night sky, and even a large object that some folks thought was the second coming of Jesus himself. But hold on a second. Before you start prepping your apocalypse bunker, we'll also hear from both believers who see these events as harbingers of the end times and skeptics who offer more scientific explanations. So, is this the beginning of the end or just a case of mistaken identity in the clouds? Imagine gazing up at the sky and spotting a cloud formation so mesmerizing it sparks a flurry of theories and discussions. Some suggest it's a divine sign, hinting at monumental events looming on the horizon. Others speculate about advanced weather manipulation or even teleportation technology at play. As people ponder these extraordinary sightings, conversations often circle back to biblical passages, like Matthew 24, 3, which talks about celestial signs heralding the second coming of Jesus. But before we delve into the celestial events witnessed in Jerusalem, let's clear up some misconceptions about angels. Sure, they're often depicted as serene figures strumming harps in heavenly realms. But they're more than just pretty pictures. Angels are formidable spiritual beings with unimaginable strength. They can stand in the presence of the divine, a privilege beyond mortal comprehension. If we were to encounter the divine in all its glory, our spirits would be overwhelmed by its sheer magnitude. Angels possess a power that goes beyond our understanding. They're like spiritual superheroes, capable of incredible feats. Just imagine, there's a tale in the Bible where a lone angel takes down a whopping 185,000 Assyrian soldiers in a single night. Another angel steps in to shut the mouths of hungry lions, protecting a prophet named Daniel. These celestial beings aren't just passive spectators in the cosmic drama, they're active participants. They roll away stones from tombs, guide people to fateful encounters, and serve as messengers, protectors, and guides, all in accordance with the divine will. Now, how do we recognize these angelic messengers? Well, they're not just fluffy-winged cherubs floating on clouds. Angels are personal beings with minds, emotions, and wills, just like us. Though they don't have physical bodies, they can sometimes take on tangible forms when needed. While angels are incredibly knowledgeable, their wisdom isn't infinite like that of the divine. They were created as a step above humans, with deeper insights into the universe. Their understanding grows from observing human actions over time, giving them a unique perspective on history and human behavior. Despite their autonomy, angels ultimately answer to a higher authority, the divine will. God dispatches them to assist believers, but they don't act independently of that divine plan. So, while angels may seem like celestial free agents, they're actually part of a grander scheme orchestrated by the Almighty. Humans don't morph into angels after kicking the bucket. Nope, angels and humans are like apples and oranges totally different creations with their own unique purposes. Angels have never been human, and humans will never be angels. They're distinct beings in the divine playbook. In the Bible, angels aren't portrayed as wispy figments of imagination. Oh no, they're described in vivid detail, like characters straight out of an epic movie. Take Gabriel, for example, in Daniel's vision. He's described as a powerhouse, with a body like a barrel, a face as dazzling as lightning, eyes blazing like torches, and limbs shining like polished bronze. 
And remember the angel at Christ's tomb? Angels aren't just ancient myths. Nope, they're the real deal. Biblical accounts, like those involving Abraham, paint a picture of angels popping in and out of existence, showing off their tangible nature. And while angel sightings might not be as common today as they were back in biblical times, they still stir up a storm of curiosity. After all, who wouldn't be fascinated by these mysterious messengers fluttering between heaven and earth? In today's world, people are sharing stories that sound straight out of a blockbuster movie. Imagine meeting a stranger who swoops in out of nowhere, saving you from harm before disappearing into thin air, leaving you with an overwhelming sense of peace. Or catching a glimpse of a winged or robed figure, feeling like you've just brushed elbows with the divine. It's like the angelic choir that showed up to announce Jesus' birth to those shepherds way back when. And it doesn't stop there. Some folks describe feeling like they're being wrapped in angelic wings or arms, especially during moments of loneliness. It's like a warm hug from the heavens, reminding them that they're not alone. These encounters aren't just random happenings. They're reminders that God and angels are still very much involved in our lives today. They might not always come with a message or a prophecy, but they sure do bring a sense of spiritual joy and a touch of the sacred. So, whether it's a stranger lending a helping hand, a choir-like experience in a church, or a comforting embrace in times of need, these angelic encounters reassure us that we're being looked after by divine guardians. And hey, who knows? Maybe that person sitting next to you on the bus isn't just a stranger. They might just be an angel in disguise, here to remind you that you're loved and protected. Imagine feeling a deep sense of peace wash over you, like a warm embrace from the divine, during moments of loneliness or uncertainty. These encounters, where you feel like you're being held by unseen arms, are reminders of God's comforting presence in our lives, providing solace and strength when we need it most. But here's the thing. Not every supernatural encounter is a friendly visit from above. The Bible warns us about fallen angels, those sinister beings who align themselves with the dark forces. They're out to deceive and destroy, so we've got to be sharp and spiritually vigilant. Yet, amidst these challenges, we find assurance in Jesus. He promises to walk beside us through every trial, offering a constant source of strength that even surpasses the angels. It's like having a steadfast companion by your side, no matter what storms may come your way. And speaking of storms, biblical prophecy talks about cosmic signs signaling the end times. Think darkened skies, falling stars, and celestial disturbances. These signs aren't just random occurrences. They're divine warnings, signaling the grand finale of God's plan for redemption and judgment. So, what do we do in the face of such cosmic chaos? We cling to Jesus. By staying close to Him and following His guidance, we can navigate through uncertain times and align ourselves with God's ultimate plan. Now, as for those strange sightings in Israel, well, they've got people buzzing with wonder and speculation, wondering if they could be signs of Jesus' return. It's like connecting the dots between these real-world events and the ancient prophecies laid out in the Bible. The Bible isn't shy about mentioning signs in the sky that will signal the return of Jesus. These signs aren't just for show. They're like flashing warning lights, telling everyone to pay attention. For those who ignore them, it's going to be a terrifying wake-up call when Jesus shows up. But here's the good news. If you're keeping your eyes peeled and your ears open, there's a promise of redemption waiting for you. Jesus himself said that when these signs start popping up, believers should stand tall and look up, because it means their rescue is right around the corner. The Bible tells us to be vigilant and tuned in to these signs. It's like having a spiritual radar helping us walk through the twists and turns of life while staying true to what God's got in store. Now, it's natural to wonder how current events fit into all this biblical prophecy stuff. Approach it with humility and an open mind. The Bible's got plenty of advice for believers to stay on their toes and pay attention to the signs pointing towards God's ultimate plan unfolding before our eyes. So, keep your eyes peeled, stay alert, and get ready. Because something big might just be on the horizon.
atheists are giving some serious side-eye to the idea that these jaw-dropping events in Jerusalem are the handiwork of a higher power. But hold on to your hats, because we're about to dive into why these signs shouldn't just be brushed off as mere coincidence. Let's talk about the sixth seal, straight out of the book of Revelation. Picture this, a laundry list of apocalyptic happenings, like earthquakes shaking the ground, the sun going dark, the moon turning red, and stars falling from the sky. It's like Mother Nature on steroids, a cosmic show that screams divine judgment louder than a rock concert. Throughout history, when stuff like this went down, people from all walks of life, kings, queen, and even the common folk, scurried into caves, begging for a shield from God's wrath. Back in the day, Folks saw eclipses and comets as bad omens, like a cosmic finger wagging at humanity. Modern science has peeled back the curtain on these celestial spectacles, offering up natural explanations for what's going on up there. We've got the stars mapped out, and we can predict cosmic events down to the second. So, why the fuss about biblical prophecies? Well, maybe it's because in today's world, where we're bombarded with information 24-7, we need something truly out of this world to grab our attention. Maybe those signs in the sky are just the ticket to make us stop and think about what's really going on in the grand scheme of things. Picture a sky going dark, stars plummeting, and the earth quaking. Themes that echo throughout the Old Testament's prophetic writings. Isaiah, for example, paints a vivid picture of a day when human arrogance gets knocked down a notch, leaving only God's glory standing tall. These prophecies warn us about the dangers of pride, showing how it can lead to nothing but trouble. Sometimes God has to shake things up to get our attention. These cosmic commotions aren't just about flashy displays, they're wake-up calls, reminding us of our vulnerability and the need to humble ourselves before God. In the midst of all this chaos, people come face to face with the emptiness of their idols. And we're not just talking about statues here, we're talking about all those things we chase after, like money and power, that ultimately leave us feeling hollow. So, when the heavens start trembling and the stars start falling, it's not just about watching a cosmic show. It's about realizing what truly matters and turning our focus back to the one who holds the universe in his hands. Imagine the Apostle Paul pointing out that our obsession with material possessions and entertainment mirrors the ancient practice of worshipping idols. Our relentless pursuit of wealth and pleasure reflects the same emptiness condemned in the Bible. Isaiah paints a vivid picture of a day of reckoning, where God's wrath and anger shake the very foundations of the world. Celestial bodies like stars and the sun lose their shine in this cosmic drama, signaling a divine response to human arrogance and sin. Ezekiel echoes this theme, warning of heavenly signs that highlight God's judgment on those who defy His will. These disturbances aren't just flashy displays. They're warnings for us to wake up and turn away from our selfish ways. Think of the darkness mentioned it in biblical plagues, like the one in Egypt during the time of the Exodus. It symbolizes God's intervention to soften hardened hearts. Similarly, in the end times, darkness will shake the world out of its complacency under Satan's influence. These signs aren't meant to scare us into submission. They're meant to draw us closer to God, prompting us to reflect on our sins and seek forgiveness. Christians are called to stay vigilant and faithful, just like in Revelation, where believers are urged to keep watch and maintain their spiritual integrity in anticipation of Christ's return. So, why should we pay attention to these signs? God's interventions might seem stern, but they're all about creating a sin-free kingdom where His ways rule supreme. So, when we're urged to watch and stay faithful, it's like a glimmer of hope signaling the arrival of a kingdom filled with genuine peace and eternal joy. In the book of Revelation, those who stay spiritually faithful are pictured wearing white robes, symbolizing purity through the cleansing power of Jesus' sacrifice. This imagery reminds us of the importance of staying spiritually alert, especially during the chaotic events of the end times. But what does it mean to watch? It's not just about observing celestial signs, 
It's about staying tuned in to what's happening in the world and guarding against religious deception. Christ's return will be sudden and unexpected, so while we might not have control over worldly affairs, we can prepare ourselves spiritually by aligning with biblical teachings. Watching means being introspective, examining our beliefs and actions, and staying vigilant against spiritual deception. It's like getting ourselves spiritually fit for the big day. In Revelation, Christ reveals the impending seven plagues before his return, emphasizing the need for vigilance. Just like a thief in the night, his arrival will catch many off guard. So, let's heed the call to stay spiritually alert, wearing the white robes of purity that symbolize our readiness for his return. In Matthew 25, 31, it's not just us humans eagerly awaiting the big event. Angels are right there in the mix, too. They're not just bystanders. They're active participants in this monumental moment. Their presence signifies the ultimate fulfillment of our hopes, the triumphant return of Jesus Christ, our Savior. As we anticipate Christ's arrival, we're reminded to stay vigilant, clad in the garments of spiritual fidelity, ready for His imminent appearance. In Revelation 5, we're treated to a celestial spectacle, angels surrounding the throne of the Lamb, Jesus Christ, engaging in endless worship. Their resounding chorus declares the greatness of the Lamb who was slain, recognizing His supreme power and glory. And let's not forget the prophets of old, who were like detectives eagerly searching for clues about the salvation that would come through Christ. They may have only caught glimpses of what was to come, but their words were inspired by the Holy Spirit, the true author of the Bible. Even the most exalted spiritual beings, including angels who dwell in the realms beyond our understanding, were not privy to the full scope of God's divine plan. The mystery of salvation, orchestrated through the sacrifice of Jesus Christ on the cross, remained veiled even from their lofty perspectives. This revelation underscores the unfathomable depth of God's love and the intricacy of His design for redemption. Reflect for a moment on the angels, celestial beings who beheld the unfolding drama of humanity's salvation with awe and wonder. They witnessed the outpouring of grace and the promise of eternal life bestowed upon humanity through Christ's sacrifice. Yet, despite their proximity to the divine, they were unable to partake in this profound gift. Their understanding, though vast, could not penetrate the depths of God's mercy and grace as experienced through the salvation offered to humankind. This realization compels us to reevaluate the significance of our own salvation. We are urged not to treat it lightly or take it for granted. Instead, we are called to approach our salvation with reverence and awe, recognizing it as a precious gift given to us by God's boundless grace. Our salvation is not contingent upon our own merit or works. It is a manifestation of God's unconditional love and undeserved favor. However, this does not absolve us from responsibility. Rather, it asks us to work out our own salvation with fear and trembling, not in a sense of earning it through our efforts, but in a spirit of humility and gratitude for the immeasurable gift we have received. At the heart of our salvation lies a profound truth. Our ultimate focus should always be on God Himself. While angels serve as messengers between heaven and earth, they are not the ultimate source of our salvation. It is God, in His infinite wisdom and compassion, who has bestowed upon us the greatest gift of all, His Son, Jesus Christ. Jesus, the embodiment of God's love and grace, came to earth not only as a messenger, but as the living expression of God's redemptive plan. Through His sacrificial death on the cross, He offers us forgiveness, reconciliation, and the promise of eternal life. His invitation to salvation extends to all, regardless of our past mistakes or shortcomings. Accepting Christ as our Lord and Savior is more than a mere intellectual assent. It is a transformative decision that involves acknowledging our need for His forgiveness, turning away from our sins, and surrendering our lives to His Lordship. It is an invitation to enter into a personal relationship with the Creator of the universe to experience His love, His grace, and His abundant life. Do you believe in God? 
Let us know your thoughts in the comment section below, and for more such amazing videos, do subscribe to our channel.